How many trees does it take to offset your carbon footprint? This might sound like a simple question, but there are a monumental amount of variables to consider. What species of tree are we discussing? A palm tree or a hardwood tree? What about the growing conditions like water, sunlight, nutrients, space, humidity? What about the survival rate of these trees? How many trees would need to be planted to absolutely guarantee an offset area carbon footprint? Then there are the deeper questions. Does planting trees even make a difference? Would it effectively offset your carbon footprint? And can it truly have a significant impact on our world? In this video, we're arguably going to take this a step too far, and I promise we'll find the exact number of trees it takes to offset your carbon emissions. So let's start out by just understanding the CO2 emissions of a single person. Of course, like anything else in this video, this isn't straightforward. If you're American or Canadian, you unfortunately need to plant way more trees than if it, let's say, from India or the United Kingdom. This is simply because Americans and Canadians produce way more CO2, being on average 14 tons per year, while people from India produce only 2.1 tons per year. If you were to average out every person in the world, you get a mean CO2 emission of 4.7 tons per year. And this will be the number we use in this video. For simplicity, we're also gonna take the mean 73 year average life expectancy for a human to find the total lifetime CO2 emissions. So if you multiply 4.7 tons times 73 years, you get 343.1 tons. And this number is the average CO2 a person emits in their lifetime. Now, depending on many variables, a tree sequestered out a different amount of CO2. By far, one of the biggest variables is what species of tree it is. A eucalyptus tree, being one of the best trees, is sequestered between 0.03 tons and 0.06 tons of CO2 per year. While a beech tree will only sequester between 0.008 tons and 0.018 tons of CO2 per year. So theoretically, if you live in the optimal place for eucalyptus trees, one tree could offset 0.06 tons of CO2 in one year. This means you'd only need to plant around 80 trees to offset a lifetime of emissions. Now looking at this, it seems helpful, but there are other factors. Most of us need to play catch up since we're not planting 80 trees at birth. And the trees will also not be fully grown through our lifetime. So they won't be at their optimal CO2 sequestering rate through our entire lives. This means the actual number of trees that needs to be planted is much higher. For more accurate calculation, we're gonna again take the average and say a tree sequesters a conservative 0.01 tons of CO2 per year for the first 20 years. And then a conservative 0.03 tons a year for the rest of our lives. We're also gonna assume a 10% failure rate among these trees planted and hopefully by taking these conservative estimates, we can ensure our CO2 emissions are offset. This leads us into our next section, which is actually calculating how many trees any given person will need to offset their carbon footprint. I have this separated into age ranges, and you'll see why in a minute. So if you're between zero and nine, you need to plant 148 trees. 10 through 19, 242 trees. 20 through 29, 326. 30 through 39, 496. 40 through 49, 1,573. 50 through 59, 2,696, 60 through 69, 9,436, and if you're 70 to 73, I'm sorry, but 34,310, which is also the amount of trees you need to plant to offset a lifetime of carbon emissions in just one year. This range all takes the higher of the range, so if you want to find a more exact number, the next part will tell you just how to do that. This formula isn't hard, and for anyone who's interested, this is how I worked it. It starts by identifying your age and the amount of CO2 you emit per year. In this case, we're going to leave the CO2 per year at 4.7 tons since that's the average. We're going to use me as an example, so 17 years old. First, we calculate how much CO2 the person has and will emit. So I emit 4.7 tons a year with the average life expectancy of 73 years. We'll just multiply 4.7 by 73, leaving us with 343.1 tons. Now you can skip this step since it would be the same for everyone, but if you want to calculate the amount of CO2 more accurately, you can go off your country's average CO2 emissions per person instead of using the global average. Okay, this next step is the only complicated part. Based off the amount of years you're expected to live, you need to subtract 20 years from it. So for me, I'm 17 and life expectancy is 73. So 73 minus 17 leaves us with 56 years. Then minus 20 to take out the amount of years the tree will only be sequestering 0.01 tons. And with what's left, if anything, that will be the amount of years that the tree will sequester 0.03 tons of CO2 instead of 0.01. So going back to my example, I have 56 years left and 36 of those years will be spent sequestering 0.03 tons, which means we can use the equation 20 years times 0.01 tons plus 36 years times 0.03 tons to find how much CO2 a single tree will sequester in my lifetime. If you have less than 20 years left to live, you can leave out the 0.03 part entirely and just do 0.01 times the amount of years left. For me, it leaves us with 0.2 tons plus 1.08 tons, which means that a tree can sequester 1.28 tons in my lifetime. So 343.1 tons divided by 1.28 tons times 1.1 equals 294.8. So 295 trees would offset the average 17 year old CO2 emissions. But since I'm American, I should really be planting around 800 trees since Americans produce around 14 tons of CO2 per year. Now that we've answered the question you came here for, I wanna propose a few more questions. One of which being, does an individual carbon footprint being offset do anything? And well, maybe not. 
The very idea of a carbon footprint came from a marketing campaign from British Petroleum. They do essentially blame you for climate change. The sad reality is that even if you did plant all your acquired trees and brought your carbon footprint to zero, that seemingly monumental amount of CO2 removed would be filled back in by the energy sector in just one second. But at the same time, if everybody did that, that's 8.2 billion seconds or 260 years. So yeah, together we can make a difference and the only way we will is if we start. But really, we do also need radical reforms to save ourselves from the climate crisis. And I say also because both need to be done, and either one could lead to the other. If people are more environmentally conscious, businesses are forced into line. We're already seeing this, just not enough. And if businesses are more environmentally conscious, consumers are forced into line. It just seems for some reason, we find it easier to convince billions of civilians over just a few stubborn politicians. Besides all of that, looking deeper, planting hundreds of trees has a much bigger impact than just removing carbon dioxide. It absorbs sulfur dioxide, nitrogen oxide, ammonia, and lessens the noise pollution, conserves water, reduces runoff, improves mental health, provides a habitat for billion animals, revitalizes soils, and creates shade and wind breaks. These benefits far outweigh the benefits of just offsetting your carbon emissions, so even if it feels a bit helpless, trust me, it isn't. Hope you enjoyed today's video and you found it helpful. But for now, I'm gonna go plant some trees because time's only ticking and the amount of trees I need to plant is only gonna keep going up. This is probably not gonna be very good quality, but I gotta go to work in about 40 minutes. So uh, we gotta get this video done. All right, and use the compost. I'm only gonna use biggest of the three of these right now. Let the other two grow out a bit bigger. And a little bit better dig around it. All right, just throw a little more dirt around it just in case. And now water. Make sure the is all compacted so it retains moisture. And since it's the dry season here, I'll water it for the next two weeks, make sure it uh, gets rooted in and survives.